In this video, we're going to discuss how to create and work with objects and families in Construct 3. Objects are the items that make up and do most of the work in your games. The Construct 3 game engine has predefined so-called plugins for each type of object you may include in your games. For example, the Sprite plugin allows you to include digital graphics within your games, which can appear on screen and be manipulated programmatically. The typical game in Construct 3 consists primarily of sprite object types. In this example, I created an animated B sprite object type. Once you have your object type defined, you can add one or more instances of that object type to the layouts of your game. Each instance or object you place on a layout must be assigned to a specific layer, which defines in part its Z order. You will find it useful to group the object types you define into what are called families. Families are essentially groups of object types that have something in common. One caveat to keep in mind is that members of a family must be of the same plugin type. For example, they must all be sprites. In this example, I've created a family named enemies and included within it three sprite object types. These are what I defined to be my enemies within my game project. The goal of families is to simplify your game development by allowing you to treat many separate individual related objects as a single unified group. Imagine you're creating a game in which there are many enemies that can destroy the player. It should be pretty clear that coding a simple event that references one all-encompassing family would be far superior to one that is unnecessarily complex which lists each and every individual enemy object type. This is exactly the purpose of families in Construct 3, to avoid repetition and to simplify your life. Before you start defining your own object types, you need to take a moment to familiarize yourself with Construct 3's Image and Animations Editor, the tool used to edit your images, multi-frame animations, and much more. In the center of the screen is the main image pane, surrounded by a set of manipulation and drawing tools. To the bottom, is a frames pane where you can work on your animations. A list of an object's animations and their properties are found to the right. Lastly, on the left is a context menu that appears based upon the option you select. This editor is also where you edit the image points of your objects. Image points are exactly what they sound like, useful points you define for your graphics that afterwards can be referred to throughout your game. For example, you could define an image point near the left hand of a fireball wielding hero. Then you could code your game to spawn fireballs from that point whenever the user hits the spacebar. Understanding image points is important for a far more important reason. Every sprite has a special image point called the origin. This so-called origin point defines the object's center of rotation and therefore controls how the object spins, how it snaps to the grid when it's added to a layout, and much more. Whether it be a single image sprite or a multi-frame animation, each one of your graphics will automatically be given an image point named origin, represented by the index of zero. Additional image points you choose to create are indexed one, two, three, and so forth. Allow me to demonstrate how to create an object type of the sprite plugin type. Go to object types in the projects bar and right click add new object type. Choose the plugin type or search for it. Name your object type something logical, like crate. A crosshair will appear above the current layout. When you click, the image and animations editor appears. Now bring in your graphic. There are numerous ways to do this. You can adjust the collision polygon. You may have heard of this referred to elsewhere as the hitbox. You can fiddle with the image points, including the XY coordinates of the origin. Close the editor by clicking the X to arrange and duplicate instances of the object. You can duplicate using control drag release. You can also adjust the Z order of each instance if necessary, moving it above or below other objects that it shares a layer with. If necessary, add your new object type to a family so that it inherits properties and behaviors of other common objects. In this case, we add the crate to the solids family so that it behaves like a physical object that the player can walk upon. Last but not least, preview the layout. Everything looks great. Working with objects and families is easy and fun in Construct 3.